town. Come on. Okay, get it. You make it sound like we're a bunch of Neanderthals, squatting around a fire, afraid of the dark. Only now we sit in front of the TV. And really, let's be honest here, that's where a lot of this violence comes from in the first place. Oh, please. You're not really serious. You're not going to want to blame this on television. A guy goes out there and beats up uh, prostitutes. You really believe that television doesn't influence behavior? I believe it does. That's why they put commercials on. But we're not talking about what kind of uh, cornflakes you buy. Oh. oh But are you going to continue to stick your head in the sand over this? Continue to ignore this problem that's in your neighborhood, your constituency? I'm telling you right now, just trust me on this. You'll be facing a mutiny at the polls come next election. It's not only in my constituency, it's a global problem. Oh, no, it's your constituency. 30 missing women have disappeared so here, from here. Here we go. Now you're going, there you go off on another well, tangent. Let me ask you again, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to blame it on bad TV? And just Listen. I feel for these women, but they put themselves in harm's way. It's a lifestyle choice. No woman who gets into a car with a total stranger is choosing to get herself killed. Do you really think so? Okay, let's let's forget about the victims for a minute. Let's talk about the killers. Hold, hold it, whoa, hold, wait a minute. Back it up. No. What? We aren't sure that any of these women have been murdered. No, you're right, Jack. Maybe they're not missing. Maybe they're on vacation in the Bahamas. Weren't there two prostitutes found murdered earlier this year? No, well, one was found earlier this year. That was Gwen Marchetti. And Suzanne Myers was killed four years ago. And we think the same killer was involved. Well, it seems to me you're talking about protecting these women. When isn't that what we already pay cops to do? Of course, that's what they're there for. But come on, most of these girls here, they're transients, they're drug addicts. It's impossible to imagine the police can keep track of them. Well, that this. tells me right away what? where they are, which is everywhere. They don't want to be found. Well, Councilman has a point. These women, by virtue of what they do, have got to be wary about contacting police in the first place. Well, not when it comes to their own safety. At least that's not my perception. What I see is the needle exchange pumping out that list every week of bad tricks and the sexual predators and the girls themselves help to fill that out. If the police had more resources, they could be helping. They could be uh, at the very least collating this information and trying to identify these guys, but that's not what's happening. down here. So, fixing a flat tire. It's out in the back. My dog. You been drinking tonight, sir? Uh, no, sir. I, uh, I was working late. I'm, I'm just on my way home. I'm going to need to see inside the back here. Put the tire iron down. Sir, I'm going to have to ask you to put that down and step away from the truck. What's going on? Open the tailgate. You, put your hands behind your neck and lace your fingers. I'm going to tell you one more time. Put it Jesus down. Christ. <laughs> oh, Jesus, I thought I was going to die. <laughs> and how much would a red light district cost? Well, a few less lives, for a start. Then next, you're going to be organizing a, a hooker's union and asking the taxpayers to give these girls a little hazard pay. Now, that's a brilliant idea. That's the most brilliant thing I think I've ever heard you say. I want to write that down. This would be a good time to take a break. We're talking to City Corner Dominic Da Vinci and Councilman Jack Pierce about prostitution in the city of Vancouver. We'll be back with your calls after this. Well, let's see how you lit up the board that day. So I gotta take this. Can I go here? Excuse me. The woman's name is Ginger Smith. She got shook up pretty bad, but uh, she's okay. Boy, she got lucky. 
I got an idea on the guy who grabbed her. His name's Larry Williams. Um, she says she's pretty sure he was gonna kill her. Is that how it sounds to you? I, that was his plan. I, he made no attempt to disguise himself. Um, her mouth was gagged, the way she was tied up, him beating on her. I think this is more than a sex crime. Is that right? Did you call homicide? Yeah, Williams is on his way there right now. OK, well, if it's what you think it is, uh, maybe we should get a pathologist to take a look at these injuries. What do you think? I'll run it by her. Uh, she got the shit scared out of her, but um, I think she'll be willing to cooperate. OK. Hey, thanks for the call, Bobby. One of the neighborhood kids was playing road hockey. Found him here behind the wheel. Could be he had a heart attack, but he looks healthy as a horse. Except for this burn on his hand. Yeah, his sleeve and his hand there. What the hell is that? Looks like electrical burns to me. Well, the keys are still in the ignition, so he didn't fry himself hot wire in the car. It's pretty hard to get electrocuted hot wire in a car. Oh, yeah? You never got a shock from your car battery? That'll tighten your shorts, believe me. Yeah, but it's not enough to kill, unless you got a weak heart. You got a line on that guy yet? No, no wallet. But the car's registered to a David Creeker, Marpole address. Well, maybe he got struck by lightning. Now, what's that phenomenon, you know, where you suddenly burst into flames? What, spontaneous combustion? Yeah, yeah, that's it. I thought it was a fancier name than that for it, but... So the guy's changing a flat. That's when a couple of uniforms spot him. They go to check it out. They find a woman in the back of his truck all bound up, gagged, beaten up pretty evil. Well, attempted homicide, sounds like. Yeah, the attacker's Larry Williams. They're bringing him in to interview. Hey, maybe we should have a look at him for the missing prostitutes. Yeah. What kind of car was he driving? A pickup, registered in his own name. We impounded it. We're sending it over to the forensics garage. Well, that don't sound right. A guy driving his own car like that. Yeah. What about Prince? I mean, we got Prince off both the bodies of Marchetti and Myers. I dance looking for a match against Williams right now. Hey, is Williams in the system? He's got no record, but uh, the guy doesn't just start out one day picking up hookers with a rope, some tape, and a gag in his car. No, that takes some planning. I think he could have been doing this before. Mm. I, uh, I understand we have a suspect. He looks pretty good for an attempted homicide on a working girl. Seems like it. All right. I want you all to clear your desks and make this a priority. Now, Mick, I want you working with Detective Marlowe from Sex Crimes, all right? Angela. Contact Da Vinci, see if he's been able to draft a pathologist to examine the victim. Now, Leo, well, how's your slate? I got this electrocution thing, a guy got zapped. It looked pretty dubious. OK, well, uh, try to wrap that up. Give us a hand on this one, will you? This is the closest thing we've got to a hot lead on these disappearances. I don't want this to grow cold. I don't know if Detective Cosmo explained this to you, but the reason you're here, why the coroner's office and also homicide is interested in this, because we've had, uh, well, a lot of missing women, possibly some murders recently. I understand. I knew a couple of those disappeared girls. So afterwards, uh, if it's all right with you, we'd like to take you down, see one of our pathologists, and let her take a look at your injuries and see if they match up with anything we're dealing with. Sure, no problem. Thanks. Okay, now, you told Detective Marlowe that you thought your life was in danger. Oh, yeah. The prick was gonna kill me. Okay, so he picked you up. Anything different about that? No, he, he seemed married. Normal. So what, did the, what do you want? Around the world. And then later when I was in his truck, he said he wanted a special to go with that. A special? What, what kind of special did he want? They wanted a little rough, he said. Did it seem to you that he'd uh, done this before? Oh, yeah. This was not his first time. It was my first time. <laughs> you can believe that or not, I don't care. So we go down in this drool and show your picture around. Not one of these women's going to recognize you then, right? Right. Go ahead. Well, let's just say it's your first time. All of a sudden, you decide just like that one day you're going to kidnap one of them? Oh, no, I, I didn't kidnap her. Oh, so she just sort of ended up in your truck, in the back, all by herself with her hands and ankles tied with an indoor court ball stuck in her mouth? Right. That's what I paid her for. You paid her for that? <laughs> yeah. 
I just talked to her. That's not what she told me. Huh. Well, I guess it's her word against mine, then. Okay, so he ties you up with your permission. Yeah. But tight, and I didn't like it like that. But I didn't say anything right there, because, like I said, he was paying for it a little rough. I'm not exactly a spring chicken. I gotta take what comes along. Okay. So, what happens next? Uh, let's see. Um, I tied up her feet. You always keep rope in your car? Yeah, it's for my boat. And where do you keep your boat? At my house. Okay, go on. Then what? I was ready to uh, do it to her. So he gets his dick out, you know? And he uh, he tries to get himself hard, but it's it's not working, so he, he starts to hit me. Uh, was that part of the agreement? Did he pay for that, too? Yeah, but not in the face like he was doing. On the body, okay, I, I done that before. So I, I told her to fight me, because it, it gets guys aroused, you know. And, uh, and then, uh, then she's hitting me. I fought with him a little. And he starts hitting me harder, so I was getting scared, so I told him to stop it. But the more I got, scared I got, the more he just kept on hitting me. He was getting off on it. Yeah. And then she hits me in the groin area. Really, really hard. So I screamed, and then he, he kicked me in the side, and then uh, he shoved that goddamn ball in my mouth. And then maybe I punched her. I, I don't know if I, if I did. It wasn't very hard. And then nothing. <laughs> Hit the flat tire, and then you guys came along. <laughs> and then he says, you little bitch, I'm going to cut you up into pieces and feed you to the rats and the ravens. The way we see this is you, you've done this before. You had the rope, you had the ball, you had the whole thing planned out and you're fine. You need help, Larry. The best thing you can do is tell us all about it right now. All the times you've done this before, and we can get you that help. You're right. I think you're absolutely right. I want to see a lawyer. This is where he tied you up with the rope? Uh-huh. Did you tie up your hands first or your feet? Do you remember? Hands, I think. Did he hit you at all? On the head. On the side of the head here. I see. There's some bruising on the temple there. Mm-hmm. Did he uh, strike you with an object? His fist. Both fists? Yes. Did he strike you anywhere else? My ass, my legs, pretty much all over. Could you stand and open your gown? I'd just like to take a couple more photographs, if you don't mind. In the back, if you could. This is where we all end up one day, huh? Any luck matching up the injuries with uh, Marchetti and Myers with these? Well, then Marchetti had pattern bruising and so yeah. did Suzanne Myers, but that doesn't necessarily mean there's any connection to uh, Williams. Also, in the uh, two autopsies, pathology found cotton batten shoved in the back of their throats. Well, this one was gagged with a backbone and taped shut. Could be a connection. Could be a new twist the guy's got. Have we got the anion file from both Marchetti and Myers? Mm -hmm. So, if we can get a sample from Williams, we can look for a matchup then. This is sad. She's probably right back out there working her corner. Yeah. That's reality. Yeah, the guy lived alone in a basement suite. Pretty cheap rent. And he worked part-time. 
He's a handyman. A handyman, huh? Yeah, you know, odd job, plumbing, carpentry. Afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon. Cause of death is electric shock to the system causing cardiac arrhythmia to the heart. He was electrocuted. This is where the uh, voltage entered his body. By the degree of burns, it suggests a pretty high voltage. Must have grabbed onto a live wire or something, huh? Any number of things, I suppose. Oh, and um, see these uh, pinpoint burns that Horseshoe was healed there? Yeah. Those are from the nails in his shoe, where his body completed the circuit. His soles were made of leather. Any chance he got a hit of the juice and then climbed back into his car? Mm, no, no. This guy had dropped where he stood. So he was fixing something, he gets a hit of heavy volts, and drops dead. Mm -hmm. well, anybody who gets hit with that much juice has got to blow some fuses somewhere. I got his phone book. I had to start making some phone calls, see if I could find out where he was working that day. Thank you. Winston? All right, so the Crown is charging Williams with sexual assault. But his lawyer is refusing to give up a DNA sample. He says there's no cause because it was all consensual. Oh, Christ. You know, unless we get some more compelling evidence, his lawyer's going to tie that up for months. Okay, uh, get a hold of the bad trick list from sex crimes. For the past 12 months, go over that with a comb and see if Williams is on there. Now, if we can show a pattern of sexual assault, the Crown can argue that he's a danger to public safety. Yeah. I just got the call from IDET. Uh, the prints we got from Williams don't match the prints they found on the bodies of Mark Eddie and Myers. All right, well, that doesn't mean this guy isn't involved. Now, what about the, uh, the rope that he used to bind Ginger with? Anything there? Yeah, Chick says the yellow poly pro that uh, was used on Mark Eddie and Myers is the same, but it's from a different batch than the one used on Ginger. Okay. Mick, I want you to uh, take Bob Marlowe, get a warrant on the sexual assault charge, and get over to Williams' house ASAP. Listen, if the uh, judge gives you any grief about it, have him give me a call. Okay. Your husband have any camping gear? You could check in the spare room. I don't go in there. I want to thank you for your cooperation. All right? You people have the wrong man. Larry's not like that. Racket balls. Well, there's a little something. Take a look at that boat. Yeah. Bob Marlow? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. There we go. Yeah. Williams just made bail. Shit. Man, you got a dozen pros a night getting beat up. How come they don't report that to us? My guess is it cuts into the working day. It's easier to put them on the trick list. Jeez. You got anybody in there that uh, fits William's description? Pretty generic descriptions for the most part. Got a couple here that are close. White male, 40s, 5'8", businessman, bondage, refuses to pay, beats victim, and dumps her out of the car. Actually, the woman who reported one of those is coming down to talk to me. Should be any time now. Hey, Leo. You got something for me? Yep. Following on your idea about the pop fuses? Yeah. You know that neighborhood there where we found the body? Turns out they had a blackout the night before we found him. Where was that? A couple of square blocks between Victoria and Clark, 12th to Broadway. All right. Detective, this woman here says she has an appointment with you? Yeah, great. We'll do an interview. Yeah. Excuse me, gentlemen. Yeah. Sure. I think I got his phone book over here. I think he was working about three jobs that day. Somewhere in here. Let's see. Yeah, 2874 East 10th Street. That's the neighborhood. Yeah. So you just remember, you want to stay with your family, then you will abide by the judge's restrictions. That means no hookers. I mean it, you don't come within 50 miles of a hooker. No phone sex, no going to strip bars, nothing. You want to get off? Use your imagination. Oh, and one other thing, I've got an appointment made for you to see a psychiatrist. <laughs> I don't need a shrink. Right. But when we go into court, 
I want to be able to hand the judge a nice, rosy, first-class evaluation of you as a red-blooded, healthy male with a normal to maybe a little above normal sex drive. Okay. You understand? Okay, that's good, that's good, I understand. And don't lie to him, because he'll know it. And he won't give us any kind of report at all. So are we clear on this? You are going to abide by the judge's restrictions, and you're going to go see the psychiatrist. Okay, okay, we're clear. Good. Because believe me, you don't want to be stuck in a holding cell waiting for your trial accused of a sex crime. That's not a fun time. Just tell me why you needed to do this. Honey, it was a mistake, just one time. Then why were the police here going over everything? Because they, they need to put the blame on somebody and I was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Honey, there's nothing wrong with me. What'd you say to them? I said they had the wrong man. Well, they do. When we make love, do you think of someone else? Oh, for Christ's sakes. I mean, everybody has fantasies. I, I can't go anywhere in this house without stumbling over a stack of your romance novels. But they're just stories. Well, there you go. You see, it just answered your own question. Yeah. I can't stand around here all day. I don't have time for this. Come on. Give me a little smile. Hey, it's my girl. Landlord said he sent the handyman over here to clean out the furnace. The house key should be on that key ring there. Yeah, it looks like it's one of these two here. Let me try this one. Jesus, it smells like a skunk or something died in here. There's the furnace. Here's the guy's toolkit. Yeah. I don't know of any handyman who leaves his tools behind on the job. Doesn't look like he had a chance to change the filter. There's the new one right there. You see anything around here that would have killed him? Well, any one of these power cables could have done it. Yeah? Well, if he dropped here, how did his body get to a car three blocks away? Somebody must have moved it. Yeah. Maybe Patricia was wrong for once. Maybe he got zapped here, but he didn't drop. What are you trying to say? The guy got up and staggered outside and put himself behind the wheel? Hey, no, I heard that. You know, if you get a zap, your brain has to complete its last thought, like a computer. I never heard yeah, that. Yeah, so I'm thinking the guy was thinking, maybe I got to go back to the car and get something. And then he gets hit, and then he heads back to the car. Excuse me. Jesus. Vancouver Police, what are you doing? Um, I, I was, what, what are you guys doing? I asked you first. I was just looking for my lawnmower. Oh, you live here? No. Nope, uh, they borrowed my lawnmower and I was just coming to get it back. Your lawnmower's in that room? No, no. I, yeah, I don't know where it is, that's weird. I just probably go, so. No, that's sorry, okay, you know. son, you stay right there. We'll get your lawnmower for you. Oh, great. Holy shit. <laughs> What's that? I can see why you needed your lawnmower, man. The grass is getting kind of high in here. Got a couple kilos of good high-grade ganja in here, that's for sure. Got a real burn mark on the door jam here. Oh, here we go. Live power line running all the way down and around to the handle. Booby trap. How does that work? You grab onto the door handle there, you get hit with some juice. You're standing on a metal plate. That completes the circuit. Don't worry. Probably broke the circuit when the handyman got dropped. How old were you when you first started to fantasize about sex? Uh, 11, maybe 12. OK. Did you use anything to help your fantasy? Yeah, uh, detective magazines, that kind of thing. Did you masturbate using those magazines? <laughs> oh, yeah, all the time. OK. Other people I've seen in your situation often started having 
aggressive thoughts when they masturbated at that age. Did you have aggressive thoughts? Mm. I, uh, I used to see girls tied up and I was doing what I wanted with them and they couldn't say anything. When you picked up that prostitute the other day, had you fantasized about that? Obviously, yeah. How did you see it taking place? Uh, well, first I always get the girl in my car, and then uh, I ask her to let me tie her up. And is she willing? Yeah, she lets me tie up her hands and feet. She trusts me. Let me ask you, do you at any point think about the girl's feelings? <laughs> She's a prostitute, that's what I'm paying her for. Okay. What happens after you have her tied up? She's fighting me. And uh, then I put a rope around her neck and I pull it tight. And she's really scared. And that's the part I'm waiting for. And then what do you do? Nothing. It's over at that point. Okay. So, the other day, you decided to act out your fantasy. Yeah. And you prepared carefully for it. You really thought it through. <laughs> not good enough. I didn't get to finish it. Other than not finishing it, was what you did better than your fantasy? Well, she was scared, so... Yeah. If she didn't wrap the rope around her neck, you didn't get that far. No. Do you feel you failed? Yeah, I... I... needed to do that part to feel I'd done everything right. Okay. Let me ask you, Larry. Were you ever worried about getting out of control and not stopping while you were choking her? Oh, no, 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 no. I'd never let that happen. What did you think you would feel when you were finished with it? Mm -hmm. I just knew it had to change me in some way. Hey, you got a minute? Yeah, sure. What's up? I, uh, I don't know if you heard, but, uh, Larry Williams is out on bail. Yeah, well, no big surprise there. No big surprise. Pretty big disappointment. I think the guy's dangerous. Well, I'd agree with that, but, you know, he's gonna have heavy restrictions on his release. The best he can do right now, I suppose, is keep an eye on him. What else? Oh, well, that's what we're doing. Apparently, his lawyer sent him to see a psychiatrist. Well, he would do that because he needs a good report for his hearing. Do you know Mark Kinnison? Of course I know Dr. Kinnison. This guy's a top forensic shrink in the business, for God's sakes. He even writes books. I'll tell you right now, okay? If this guy's wrapped up wrong, Kinnison will catch it. He'll be in his report 100%. This guy is wrapped wrong. We don't need a psychiatrist to discover that. Okay. It's kind of late. What, 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 I don't really get what you're asking me here. If we knew what Dr. Kinnison discovered in his interview with Williams, it'd be good. We need somebody to finesse that. What are you going to hear his report at the hearing, are you? Yeah, we're going to hear it if it's a good report. If it's not, Williams' lawyer is just going to bury it. There is no way in the world to tell you right now. There's no way Dr. Kinnison's going to talk to me. Look, law's changed. He's got a door. If he's concerned that Williams is dangerous and has a reasonable expectation that there's potential of injury being done to an identifiable group, in this case, prostitutes, prostitutes. legally he can come forward. Look, we need to know if this is a guy. Frankly, I don't know what else to do. Well, okay, I'll talk to him. All right, I'll owe you one. Well, yeah, you will. Robbie, you are in some very serious trouble. You're facing a murder charge, son. <laughs> well, I didn't kill anybody. I mean, I mean, take a look at me. Do I look like a killer? I mean, uh, I'm afraid of my own girlfriend. 
Come on, let's, let's get real. The dope garden in that house was booby trapped with a live wire that toasted a handyman. That was real. Well, yeah, but I don't know anything about that. I mean, I don't even live there. Well, who does live there? I don't know. Well, in the absence of any other suspects, you being in the house, and you know on your way around you got a key, I gotta believe that you're the gardener. And I gotta believe that you're the one who laid out the booby trap. Now, how does that sound to you? Not so good. Yeah, well, it clears my books. So unless you got something to say to me, I'm going to the Crown with you as my prime suspect. Now, you want to make a statement? <sighs> yeah, okay. I knew about the pot, and I was going to rip it off. You've done this before. Yeah. Uh, last time I took about 40, 50 buds. Robbie, did it ever occur to you that you're the guy these people were trying to kill? Yeah. Yeah, it looks that way. Well, okay, who are they? Man, they tried to electrocute me for stealing a few buds. You can imagine what they're gonna do if they find out I'm a rat. Robbie, don't be a complete asshole. These people tried to kill you. What, are you trying to live by some stupid code? Come on. Give me the name of the guy who runs the house and where I can find him, and you and your girlfriend can go and live in a little house on the prairie and grow as much weed as you want. Shit. His name is Mike, and he runs a few grow houses, and he lives in the West End. Okay. Now here's what we're going to do. We're going to go over there to his house, and you are going to identify him for me. How does that sound? All I got to do is identify him. I'll do the rest. It's Robbie. Hey, Robbie. Hey, Mike. I'm assuming that's the guy. That's the guy. Oh, I uh, spoke to the shrink. Mm -hmm. He didn't really appreciate the call. Now, he was hired by uh, William's lawyers. What he says, he feels bound by lawyer-client privilege. It's not the case. Doesn't matter. He doesn't care, OK? He's not going to talk to us. I got no leads off the bad trick list. A lot of similars, a lot of guys wanting it rough, but nothing solid. And William's lawyers still won't let him give us a DNA sample. All right. Uh, chicken anywhere with the truck? He's got a team pulling it apart piece by piece. Mm -hmm. So far, all they got is a couple of uh, hair samples. Well, hey, that's some DNA right there from somebody. You know, what, what do we got in terms of DNA samples for the missing prostitutes? No, we got nothing. Nothing. Let's start getting samples from some of the families, then. OK. Anything else? Go for the wife. So you don't want me to iron it? Just take two seconds. Nah, nobody will notice. No, honey, yeah. I need all your support right now. You know that. I know. I don't understand what I'm doing here. I just want to uh, want to show you something. It won't take long. Oh God! Is this the prostitute? Yes. My husband couldn't. He couldn't have done this. We caught your husband with this woman. 
She was bound with rope and gagged with this. You recognize that? So we found another one just like it in your closet. A lot of people play racquetball. You got no reason to lie to you here. Of course you do. You've made Larry a scapegoat. You're trying to ruin his life. My life. What your husband has done is not your fault. You're not to blame for any of this. I'm sorry. I can't help you. We think you can. I'd like you to look back. Just think, try to remember. Any time at all, your husband act different, lie to you? No, never. What he did takes a great deal of planning. You must have noticed something. No. How about in the bedroom? Any problems there? Maybe while you're making love, did he ever get a little angry? Maybe you went too far? Do I have to talk in front of him? You were saying? Larry's very gentle when we make love. Who usually initiates sex between you? I do. He's not. He has a lower sex drive, the doctor says. Oh, so he saw a doctor about it? Yes. Do you know the name of this doctor? He just... He said he saw a doctor, and he had low testosterone. Did you hear that from the doctor, or did Larry tell you that? I'm not going to start following him around, questioning everything he does. God, I couldn't live like that. Mrs. Williams, now you've probably read in the paper that there are a number of prostitutes missing in this city. You can't think. Oh, that's crazy. Now you know something's wrong with Larry, and it's been wrong for a long time. You've been denying it to yourself. That's natural, because you're scared. And you should be. Because you know in your heart something is wrong. You know it. I'm leaving now. When did he first exhibit a loss of interest in you sexually? Can I leave now? Of course. When I tell my husband about this, he's going to call his lawyer, and then we'll see who's wrong here. That's fine. You can do that. But I'd like to caution you. This woman here, take another look. She told us that your husband threatened to kill her. So before you go, I'd like to offer you protection. Here's my card. If you feel you need it, just pick up the phone. I don't need protection. Larry does. From you. I think we just scared the shit out of him. Notice from your bail restrictions that there are certain areas of the city that you can't frequent. Strip clubs, any place that you might meet prostitutes. All right. Does it make you nervous having your freedom restricted like that? I can't sleep. I, I lay awake all night and I can't concentrate. Has it affected your fantasy? Yes. I'm sorry. I, uh... I'm just, uh, I'm just frustrated. I'm just angry, I'm very angry. And have those feelings affected your fantasy? I can't complete it. What if the police weren't standing in your way? What would you do? Uh, I don't know. I plan better. I anticipate mistakes. Then what? Whatever I want. But the police won't let you do that. Uh, they won't know. Why not? <laughs> not that smart. They caught you the last time. Oh, they got lucky. If you complete the fantasy, what happens? I look down on them. You're in control. Yes. Because you outsmarted them. No. Because I'm changed. And they can see that. 
Who sees? No women. In your fantasy? In their eyes. They see. In your fantasy? No. I'm doing it to them. You're doing it to them. I'm not going to get a good report. <laughs> Am I going to get a good report? It's not up to me. But I would like to see you again. I make my living doing this, and if my clients and patients can't feel they have my complete discretion, I'm out of work, and I can't help those who can use my expertise. No, 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 I totally understand here, okay? Uh, whatever happens here is between us strictly confidential. Well, I did two interviews with Williams. The first interview, I thought I was looking at a classic case of paraphilia, specifically sexual sadism. Williams had to inflict physical or psychological suffering on the sex partner in order to stimulate excitement and orgasm. Which he did. He threatened her, he beat her. Right. In that first interview, he said that he fantasized about hurting someone beyond what he'd done with the woman he was caught with. Okay, now, like I asked before, you were reluctant to talk to me. Why the change? At that point, I thought he was testing the limits of his fantasy, seeing how far he could go. And you don't think that anymore? No. I think he's already gone far beyond that. To what? To kill somebody? I think so. And I think he's preparing to attempt it again. Where are you going? <laughs> 